Well, good afternoon, folks, and an awful warm welcome to our houses. Uh, we're here. I'm joined by Shona Donaldson and Joe Aitken uh, for a wee blather and some songs. So, very warm welcome to both of you. Hello, Gary. And we've, we, we, we did hear Joe working. I'm Joe's sure frozen. <laughs> oh, and he's disappeared. He's gone. Could just be me and you today, Shona. It might just be me and you. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, aye, just a few blethers um, and some songs. Uh, the day we've got Shona, who was the first woman to win the Bothy Ballad Champion of Champions competition in Elgin. And Joe Aitken is just about back, I think. <laughs> if you watched the singer out last night, you'll realise we just had no luck getting Joe on at all. And he's back. Can you hear us, Joe? I'm hearing no. you, Gary, aye. Ah, and we can hear you, Joe, that's fine. Are you hearing me? So as I was saying, we can hear you, yes. Grand. Uh, so as I was saying, Shona, first, oh, first well. woman to win the well, uh, Champion of Champions. And Joe is the record holder, I think, I'm right in saying, with seven times having won the Champion of Champions himself. So we're in good company today. And a busy day in the Anderson I mean, household, it didn't, it didn't be a lot of years to do, do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a busy day in the Anderson household, Shona. It was indeed, aye. There's a <laughs> wee announcement this morning. There was, Paul, aye. For Paul. I'll let you uh -huh. explain if it's happened. Well, Paul was delighted, um, although we've kept for a, a couple of weeks now, but um, my, my husband, Paul Anderson, the fiddle player, uh, was awarded an MBE in the Queen's Birthdays Honours List this morning. So it's been a, a, a happy Anderson household today, and it'll be an even happier in by the night. <laughs> <laughs> After a drama to us. Oh, I am so. <laughs> Great. So... Just thought we'd hear a wee blether just to get some more information and background about the folk that mark our festival. Because, you know, there's no festival happens without the musicians and the singers that come along. So maybe, Joe, we'll start with you. How did you get involved with traditional music and song and singing body ballads? Well, I suppose it's uh, it's I been well. I turn off the camera and see if that works. See if that helps, I. <laughs> Is that marking only this? Ah, we can still hear you, Joe. Um, yep. I'm not really hearing you, you Gary. Well, Can you? We're... Oh, well. Uh, you'll just take a look at the, the target like you did with Scott last <laughs> night. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> my father used to sing about the house, but uh, you would never have got him on a stage singing because uh, that would have been showing off. But uh, I, and he, oh, he he had a, he and she had a amateur a wedding. He could be persuaded to sing. He can, but uh, no, it, it's uh, singing's I've been there, and then when the the Bothy ballads, of course, my father was a horseman in his earlier days, but uh, I really got into the festivals when the oh, he's <laughs> gone. Was just getting to the good bit. Left hanger. <laughs> it's like East Enders, it's isn't like it? East Enders. <laughs> oh, right, well, yeah. come to you, come to you then, Shona. How did you get involved <laughs> with um, music? Yeah. Well, I started off playing the fiddle. I started playing at school when I was nine, primary four, which I think is usually about the the age that they start them at school. But it was I classical stuff that I got at the school. So I then went along with Strith Bogey Fiddlers. Um, I didn't think they had a junior section at that time when I started, maybe about maybe about 11 or so. 
And uh, I met up with, like, well, you can Barbara Anderson, it's on the committee, and our sister Kate. There was a fair few of us running about the same age. And then through the fiddlers, we started going to competitions like Keith and Strachan and, and the like. And uh, I heard folk doing oh. poetry and I heard well, singing and the you know, sorts and thought I would do it enough. Oh, <laughs> it's Joe back. Joe's back. <laughs> can you hear us, Joe? I can hear myself. I'm hearing you fine uh, at the moment. Grand. Aye, well, but that was that was but looking in the door. She's lost <laughs> on something else. <laughs> what about you? You you got to the cliffhanger of your story and you disappeared. I, I can't remember like, what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was about starting go Aye. starting going to festivals. This is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Did I ken if it's going to happen? I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting uh, instructions from a technical manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to carry on without me, Gary? Well, we can hear you fine, Joe. So if you carry on with Cause Wales, I'm for you. Me Wales, I'm not hearing you the new. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You were saying about um, when you started going to festivals. No, it's, you're bracking up, Gary. I'm not no. you. Okay, well, I'll tell you, Fit, we've got a wee bit of archive footage that I'll Aye. show uh, first off, um, well, and then we'll uh, see if we can that, try and get you to see it. We've got some archive footage that will. We'll hear, um, look at first and just uh, see if we can get Joe's um, audio yeah, get... <laughs> So this is this is for the 25th anniversary festival back in 2000 and it's a, a wee clip of Joe singing in the sea field. I'm going to start off with a song. Uh, about a couple of months ago I had the, the privilege to be invited down to the, what they call the National Folk Festival, down the route uh, of Swadden and Darkest England, anyway. Down along Nottingham. And uh, Friday, right there on the Friday night, my first, my first gig was in this, this room, and there was about 60 folk in it, packed like sardines. And it was. I would, I would say the majority of them were English folk, so I'm saying to myself, well, just drop them right into the deep end, Joe, <laughs> sing a bothy ballad. <laughs> so I started off with this song, sang the verse, launched into the chorus, and the whole bloody lot of them joined in. <laughs> Trying to keep on the chorus, and I'm saying to myself, What's going on here? You know, how they like to shoot the canvas, son. <laughs> anyway, we're not going to let the English beat us, so I want you to join in the chorus. <laughs> it's the bottom yards at Delgate. <laughs> Thank you. 
Excellent stuff. Ah, Joe, we've got you back. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I was just, I was no. just watching that wee bit and uh, seeing uh, another. I was wearing in a Steve uh, Ingalls's uh, famous jer uh, jerseys there. Another uh, lad that was sorely miss. Yeah, I did yeah. wonder how the jumper had come for like. <laughs> I <laughs> Steve used to mark them and flog them about all the festivals and he had Kerry Eanes and Mufti Eanes and Keith Eanes and on a hint of Bob with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and he was some boy as well. I mean, his performances, you know, they're, they're just legendary, aren't they? Oh, I, he could go for sentimental to complete farce, like, can he? <laughs> he was... It was a bit like uh, Ian Middleton in that respect. I mean, Ian could uh, do the serious stuff and the, the comical stuff, and Steve was... Steve maybe went a bit further. He went right to farce-like. <laughs> <laughs> and well, there's some great uh, clips of Steve on the, on the archive footage that we've got on our uh, YouTube channel. And, and I was sitting watching it uh, when I was uploading it, and I was just in tears watching them. It was just hilarious. Hmm. So, Joe, you were saying about the festivals and how you started going to festivals. We're desperate to came, you. When I started, 
started going to festivals and uh, I think uh, about, well, 82 was the the uh, first, when it moved from Kinross Ross to Kerry. It was the, the festival that originated in Blair, the very first thing, and then after 12 years, they moved to Kinross. Ross. And I think it was 11 years in Kinross, Ross and then it moved to Kerry for, I don't know how they moved it, but uh, maybe... I think if they were moved or thrown out. But uh, anyway, we it landed in Kerry, and that was when I got involved and and started meeting lads like Tom Reid and Willie McKenzie and Frank McNally and and other uh, the greats, Jock Duncan and uh, lads like Willie Clark. I mean, I, I can't. You'll probably not mind a Willie Clark, but he was a big for Ballon Dallach, He was a big man with a big voice. I think he won the, the Elgin Bothy Ballad the first five years it ran. Uh, and that was in the days when they started the Bothy Ballads in Elgin, the, you didn't get a microphone because they didn't have microphones in the Bothys. Uh, and that was their, that was their thinking. But Willie, Willie could fill the, the tune hall in Elgin, we soon didn't bother like that. Yeah. Now, mention the, the Bothy Ballad Championships. You've both performed in the, at the competition in Elgin numerous times and you've both won it. Is it like, is it the feeling of, of winning it? Shona, we'll go to you first. Well, um, I'm near as, uh, as uh, I was going to say, experienced as Joe in that because I've just won it the once. I'm being nice there. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I. I was the first woman to win it, so it was kind of, it was almost just like double the delight, as it were, um, because obviously winning it is a big thing, but to be the first woman to do it, I was, I mean, it's I've been an, an ambition of mine anyway. Ever since I first started singing Bothy Ballads, if I said I would love to get to Elgin and I would love to win it, never thinking it would actually ever happen. Um, but I think actually, Gary, you were the compare the, the year that I, I won it. Man. Yep. It was obviously you being there, it helped enough. Lucky and enough. of course, you know, we look at my bloomers, so maybe that helped enough. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was great. I mean, it's, there's nothing quite like Elgin. It's nearly like a, well, I don't think it's really like a competition. You're just sitting there with your pals backstage, you know, we, a wee drama and a, a news, and then you go out and sing your song and you just defit de your day. So oh. I don't know how Joe feels about it. Maybe he thinks he's, it's a bit more of a competition feel, but. No, 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 really. It's as you say, you're there with, with your pals, and, and it, it doesn't really, well, whoever wins, we're all going to celebrate with them anyway. So, uh, and uh, although I've won it seven times, it's taken me a lot of years. Uh, I think I, I missed the first three, or the first two, was it? And, uh, and then I, uh, it's taken me a lot of years to accumulate the seven. I mean, Hector's won it six times, but he's done it in a far less, uh, a shorter, shorter time. And and to my shame, I, I missed the year that uh, Shona won it, and I was I was in I was down under at the time, and and uh, I was fair chuffed for her, but I was awfully sorry that I wasn't there to see it happening. And I, think I just got an extra big bosey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine the days we could hate bosey. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I think you're, you're both right. That the feeling backstage isn't a, it doesn't feel like a competition at all. And, and I think it is because of these pals. And, you know, you're all there together. You're keen each other really well. And need the care for wins. They just want to put on a good show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, sure, I've heard for Joe um, some archive footage. Will they come to your archive footage yet? But we, do, but we will, don't worry. <laughs> uh, maybe hand you to you for a song, if that's all. Aye, surely. Um, for last thing, I'll maybe, since we're speaking about the bothies, I'll maybe do the bothie that I won with. Um, and it actually mentions Keith in it. So that's an extra well, bonus. That's why you won, Shona. That's the, <laughs> that's the reason. <laughs> so it's a, a song called a scrunky black farmer and I think I first heard Jock Duncan singing it um, but it wasn't until there was a guy 
uh, an artist called David Blythe that was artist in residence at Devran Arts in Huntley. And he had this, well, I think originally it was a kind of roadkill project, <laughs> but he got a bit diverted with a scrunky black farmer, <laughs> didn't ask me how. But he decided that he would, he wanted to put all the known versions of the scrunky black farmer on NLP. So he did that and he asked if I would go up and record it at Errolsfield. Um, so I did that and I kind of learned it for that, although I'd heard it being sung and it's it's just been in my repertoire ever since. So I'll give you a blast of that. <clears throat> at the top of the giddy and the lands of Leith Hall, a scarunky black fair man in Errol's field a dual. We him I engaged a servant to be, who had made me lament to get far fae the sea. I engaged with this fair man to derive curtain pollu, hard fortune convenient and all fitted curu. I ain't a that number that caused me to rue. The hearted I attempted the country to view. Up fae the low country, my course I did steer to the parish of Kenneth you shortly shall hear. Their customs and fashions to me are seemed new. My rapid precedence, for so I did at the heat of the giddy we are did appear the various counties, some far and some near, for the parish or connethment, Kalmarnik and Keith, and Fea Barlower, Rothame and Fardais. But it's early in the morning that we rise to York. And the storm and the tempest can ne'er mark a stop, for the wind it does beat and the rain it does pour. And I yon black fermer on our seed is glower, but the hair's time is out and the day it has come. To the various counties we are man go home, bonny genie man travel. Bonnie Bobby also, to the back of beyond Montgomery must go. So fair you will reign adieu to your colette, for I have been with you both early and late, both early and late, and both empty and full. So fair you will reign he, I'll bid you adieu. So fair you will reign he. Adieu to ye ha, likewise to yon fair mare at bides at Leith ha, for to serve that black fair mare, I'm sure as ne sport. So I will be going to my bonny seaport. Great stuff, Shura, thank you very much. Fantastic. Uh, is Neil here? Really no. <laughs> <laughs> the scrappy black farmer and only thing with Scotland the what, probably. Uh, oh, yeah. They mentioned Clat a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul Radke saying oh, super yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, it was that. Um, I meant to say earlier on, if anybody's got any yeah. questions for Joe or Shona, just to fire them into the the uh, comments and we'll we'll uh, put them to them both. Um, now, both of you have mentioned kind of um, singers that have been at Keith a lot, Tam Reid, Jock Duncan, that kind of folk. Is there any singers that inspired you or helped you along in your kind of singing escapades? Whoever wants to start. Joe, we'll come to you. Uh, inspired me. Uh, well, there was a few folk that inspired me right enough. Um, I suppose uh, the likes of Tom Reed and Wally McKenzie and just the lads I'd mentioned before. Uh, because although I'd, I'd I sang, I maybe I was more uh, probably singing uh, Alexander Brothers style of stuff. Uh, before, I, before I started getting to the festivals and uh, still I suppose I still do sing some of their stuff and but uh, I 
I just I thought Tom Reid had a presence on stage. He didn't just start getting up and stand and sing. Tom had a presence on stage. Uh, and so did Willie McKenzie. And, you know, the uh, fact, one of the first lads, I'd been asked to, to guest at the first Curry Festival. And uh, so here's me with my collar and tie and, and my sports jacket on. And my first gig was in the early uh, on the Friday night. So as is my want, I had went to the bar to get myself a drink. And there was a lad standing there, you see, and we got on the crack. And uh, he said, and, uh, what, how are you doing? You see, oh, I'm feeling a bit nervous-like. And, oh, I, do you sing? And I says, I well. So he says, what you gave me singing like? So, so oh, I'm both in ballads, things like that. And he says, and what was you thinking of singing? So I tell him, and, oh, that'll, that'll be bra, he says, that'll be bra. And then... Uh, Turned out it was Willie McKenzie I was standing speaking to. Uh, so that was uh, that was my introduction to Willie McKenzie. And Willie, Willie made a, t- a tape for me and sent it down to me. And I, I found that uh, when I did get to meet the kind of lads, there was none of them swear to, to mark a tape when I'm speaking about uh, tapes, you'll notice. No CDs are on. Uh, Mark and the kind of Bell Stewart made a tape to me, and and uh, <laughs> I get a, she phoned and said it was ready, and I went along. I says to Pat, oh, I'll nip along to Blair. It's just well, it's fifteen miles along the road. I'll not be long, and uh, I went along to see Bell and and uh, pick up this tape. So I got invited in, and and two hours later I got. I come out of the house like, you know, after getting our, our life story and uh, it was just fascinating to meet folk like that. Like. Mm-hmm. Great. Sean, I thought about you. Oh, I mean, I, when I started going to festivals, I was going doing fiddle and poetry. I, I didn't start singing until I was about 14. Um, and I can mind the first time I did sing in public was at the Owl Pit in Huntley and the, the Huntley Folk Club was there, and it was Keithy Coburn and Colin Campbell, and they really were major inspirations to me and also encouraged me a lot when I was just starting to sing. And, of course, they said, oh, you should go along to Keith Festival. And then I met in with Joe and Jordy and Jim and Kate and, and Abdi, and they were, they were all just so nice. Like Joe said, nobody was backwards and coming forwards and giving you help and saying, oh, can, I can mind Kate saying, oh, I think you would suit this song. You should maybe learn it. And um, Jock Duncan is another singer that I just absolutely adored. Um, and I, I, like Joe said, I'm, I'm young enough to mind tapes and on. Jock Duncan sent me a tape and it was just the best thing ever because he was obviously just sitting in the front room and uh, he was getting cups of tea brought in and he just pressed record and just went for the whole length of the tape and sung and diddled and all sorts of things and it was it was great. So, I mean, there's there's been a lot of folk that have helped me along the way and they've been inspirations. But actually, just every single singer that I hear, whether they're whether they're a professional singer or no, there's always something to inspire, inspire you, Abdi, even if it's just that they've got the courage to sing. Because <laughs> it's not an easy thing sometimes, just standing up and singing in front of folk. So, I mean, there's been a hell haste of folk. I couldn't, I couldn't even begin to name Abdi yeah. that I love their singing. So. And you're saying about not being easy, not easy standing up in front of all these legends the both of ballers either. No, nah, no. Nah. But I suppose when I was 14, 15, started to sing both of ballads, I didn't really think of that. Because, Ken, when you're 14, 15, you think you're invincible and you're kind of like, oh, I'll do it no bother. You didn't think about it too much. I suppose if I think about it now, looking back, I, I should have been, my, my knees should have been knocking together a wee bit in here. But uh, <laughs> like I said, they were all so nice. I mean, it wasn't it? It was, I was never too fear of doing it in front of them. Mm-hmm. Well, Joe, we didn't get a song for you last night in the Sing Around, so would you like to give us a song, the new? Well, I don't care if it's going to work. Are you hearing me? Because my picture seems to have frozen. We've got just a frozen picture of you, but we can hear you fine. Oh, well. Well, I noticed, I noticed somebody uh, last night asked for Boogie's Bonnie Bell, and I don't think anybody sang it. 
that right? And this is Aidan that I've uh, has done me wheel at Elgin right enough. Eh, what's untied at Huntley Town? Twas there I did agree. We all boggy side the farmer, a saxman's for to fee. All boggy was a surly carol, and the sign you fool well. But had a lovely doctor and her name. Oh, we were just getting to the good bits. I think we've maybe lost Joe again. Her name was Isabel, if you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to keep us in a cliffhanger, doesn't he? <laughs> disappears off at the wrong time. Oh, me. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can get him back. Now, if he comes back. You mentioned, Fiona, that um, you started off doing poetry. Mm -hmm. And uh, you came if it's coming now. Um, I don't think I've ever seen this, actually. <laughs> I'm hoping it's you. I think it is. Um, you started off doing poetry and fiddle um, and doing poetry competitions. Well, there's a wee bit of archive footage. Um, from the vaults from 1999. So this would have been the 24th festival. Um, so we'll just share it just now. I see Joe's just about back. So we'll, we'll share this and then we'll get Joe to give us a song again. Uh, so this is Shona in 1999 uh, in the poetry competition. Now let's hear John the baby. It's the tune for duty. Sit in, please, Jemima. Kirsty, try your suit. Hey there, Wally Wapster, stop pounding in your breast. Fuck the horny god, why you be here at least? Where's the gun at sitting? We'll judge in a boon. Glasgow, hunt your wish when Glasgow's just a tune. Okay, boots and neighbours. And we'll preserve us all. Hey there, Jordy Gummy, pit that green awa. Over Friday night, Friday evening, home. Over Friday night, Friday's long and gone. Do let's hear your spellings. Fit you got any root? I reckon nature study, fit for his tatty spoot. Tin moisture, really, fit your rolling bar. Fermers, meat preserves, no fermers, do not work. Dog, tuck in the bottles. Far words, no pity. Be here, fits an army job, be landing out today. No, go on, man, fit guard to study and get the glimmer. Toddy, please, in your bottle, but not for this neat power. Over for Lady Neck. Over for Lady Neck. Lady is long and coming. All the likes of singing. I can sell a lot of the Smiths of Gun and Fireman or Charlie Cola. Sing out Susie Simmer, flat chairman like moon. Eggs you eat, you tell I can't let them have food. New for table manners, especially you, Jock Brew. Dodd, go and find your sop and sing a slumber in soon. And you, Bill Bunny Baxter, as far as you may be able, try and keep your elbows and speakers off the table. Over Friday night. Friday again, honey. Over Friday night. Friday's long and coming. You to put your pencils drop. The old car expire. It's that job you're wanting to draw the squealing fire. I reckon fire he then got the big and blaze. If they meet you, Gordon, the car should scratch your knees. Thought where's Maggie Mitchell? Do you need their seat? Tim Turk Street Billy, Jock had in your feet. I get a new jean called her beauty, Moxie Wugs. Wash your evil body, fun, did you wash your lugs? Oh, for the foot in the Friday, 
Wagner and Max. Jimmy took the Tachi, so they are stuck in Max. Who are the architects to the building, Molly? Why do I know the director of the Kunti yet? It's that. No, you might not. And you'll be all pleased yourself. Don at Stanford Lowe's and Molly ring a bell. Jordy Shocky Duster, Jean, it passed the chat. Tell it to call the officer, a wife on the back. John could ask for this to tug it to the sink. Can't you wait to dumb well, it's all, and then you think. No, a word of warning before you tuck it out. There's one spectre's coming. Had your tongue dropped on. One spectre's coming to the city G squares. Your brothers may be coming. Oh, for the deep up years. Oh, for the night and night. Night and aim and humming. God bless the night and night. It's been getting along and fun. No. <laughs> That's a blast for the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Could you do that now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think that? I would have been about 13 there, 13, right. 14 years mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. What about that for a skip then, Shona? Again, she's <laughs> <laughs> Again, it might not pair a sheen though. I love that pair of sheen. <laughs> I love that pair of sheen. Sorry, right, that's, that's my technical manager in again. <laughs> but she's. That's my technical manager in again. Oh, we need to move into the middle of it. She's left. Right, I think so. How far did I get with my son, Gary? Uh, you're just. You got the, the cliffhanger. Her name up. was. Isabel. <laughs> you were right, Shona. <laughs> okay, we'll just uh, hand it back to you, Joe. As, as long as, a, as long as I'm here. Well, you're here, we'll get you. Eh, what's untied at Huntleton? Twas there I did agree. We all boggy side the farmer. A six months for to fee. All boggy was a surly carl, and this I knew for well. But he had a lovely daughter, and her name was Isabel. New Bell, she was the bonniest lass. In all the countryside, and very soon I lost my heart to the bell old boogie side. And off times in a summer's night, I'd wander with my dear to watch the trutties lopin. By boogies water clear. Though I was yet a plume and chill. <clears throat> oh, that's wrong, see? <laughs> well, come on, Shona. I just I was named much. For Boogie's bonny bell, whenever she turned her in on me, she fairly cast a spell. I tried in vain to keep a war when it come to even tide. But in a dream I'd wander till we met on Boogie's side. Twas just afore the term time, all boogie sent for me, and says we face as black as night, it's you I want to see. If what my daughter says is true, we can no longer agree, and it's down the road you'll gang with it. A penny o your fee. Says I, old man, you're fairly wrecked. I hung my hidden shame. But I will marry Bell the morn 
angite her my name. He cursed and swore and in his rage he said that rather he would see his daughter lion did than married unto me. Though I was but a plum and chill, I thought he was gay, sir. The heart that was the pert we had, I didn't say any more. But Pat McCast and left the town, Per bell I didn't see. I was that mad I never sought the watches due to me. And knew she's what the Tinkler chap, his nickname Soder John. She hawks his pans and bruises, and be foggy lawn. They say I'll bogey ruse the day that he did rave and yell. Ah, will twas me first won the heart, O oh, bogey's bonny bell. Ah, uh, thank you, John. Right glad that you've persevered to keep coming back to us <laughs> so we could hear, <laughs> hear you live. Brilliant. Well, I'm now working, I'm working on a, a 30 odd pound Kindle. <laughs> Seems to be the end that works best. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if I go again, well, I'll, I'll persevere. But on you go. <laughs> great, great stuff. Great. Now, have you any particular songs that are favourites for either of you? Shona? Oh, I can't really say I've got a favourite song. I kind of go through phases of singing in that I like and then I get sick for the poet and then I didn't go back to it for a few years. But I would probably say Scranky Black Fermer has got a special place in my heart because it was in that I won both easily. Um, but I can't say that I've really got a favourite song. I do like bothy ballads and the big ballads enough. But then I like a chorus song enough, so I can't really pick. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what about yourself? Any particular favourites, either to sing or to, to well, listen to? No, really. Uh, the scene I got for, for Willie McKenzie, the two graduates, that he seems to go doing well. And uh, uh, probably Boogie's Bonnie Bell and, and the Hersteretti and, you know, uh, some of the both ballads. The uh, I as, as Shona says, and you're going through phases. Sometimes you, it's like you're going to a festival and you'll hear the hail, the same song sung three or four times, and then maybe another year you'll know hear, hear it sung at all. Like you can. Mm -hmm. Sure, well, maybe come back to you for for a song. Um, I'll do I'll do a song um, for Huntley since I was born and brought up in Huntley and uh, it's a song I think it's in the Greg Duncan collection and possibly in Ords and a it's a song called uh, A Jew to Bogey Side I suppose there's not enough a lot of songs written about the bogey in Huntley it's mere the different that gets mentioned <laughs> so uh, I'll give this in a bash A Jew to Bogey Side in fact when I was um, when I was biding at home, when I redecorated my room when I was in my early teens, I uh, printed the was a plane and then printed out the lyrics for my favourite songs. And I didn't actually sing a song at a time. It was years later that I learnt it, but there was a, a verse in it that I printed out and I had it up and it out. Um, and it's the pleasures I've enjoyed with you, the in my heart will bide when I am far for Huntley Toon and far for Bogey Side. So this is a duty to Bogey Side. <laughs> Assist me all ye muses, my downcast spirits raise, and join me in full chorus to sing dear Huntley's praise. For I leave a girl behind me whose joy was all my pride. 
and I'll bet fair will take Huntley Tun and a duty poky side. Companions of my youth, fair will I'll bid ye adieu. The pleasures of an evening walk I'll no more share with you. Wherever I chance to wander in her regions far and wide, my hair will be in Huntley Town and on sweet Boggy Side. How hearts of my have wandered to see the going spring. All in the merry month of May, and hear the linty sing. When wearied with my fishing rod, and when at even tide, I'll set me down to rest a while upon sweet boggy side. Farewell, you lovely meadows of you all often talk. Likewise, the hawthorn bushes that grace the gravel walk. The pleasures I've enjoyed with you, they and my heart will buy. When I am far Huntley Town and far fae boggy side. Providence protect the girl to whom I send these lines and keep her free from danger who has this heart of mine. Bless her with contentment and keep her free from pride till I return to Huntley Town and to sweet Boogie Side. Oh, I don't think I've heard that song before. No, uh, I suppose it's sung an awful lot. That tune actually it was a tune that I picked to it because when I found a tune for it, I didn't really like it. So <laughs> I picked the tune to it myself. <laughs> that's oral tradition, that's what that is. <laughs> now, we've obviously now had the only in person festivals the last couple of years. Um, just with circumstances, hopefully we'll get back to it very shortly. I think Kalerli is still hoping to go ahead later uh, next month. But any particular memories for Keith Festival's past that you can share before nine o'clock at night? Joe, we'll come to you first. <laughs> well, I was in uh, I was in coming to the Seafield. And heard to say it can't be late till it's no dark yet. <laughs> it was broad daylight, but uh, I think we'd actually missed the dark bit that night. <laughs> uh, aye. <laughs> lots, lots of uh, great memories. And uh, we were walking up the street, Tom and, and Willie McKenzie and me, and uh, there was a 12 police standing halfway up the street, the policeman and the policewoman. And we were standing cracking, and uh, all of a sudden, Willie McKenzie says uh, to the policewoman, would you, would you like to see my Petri dick? <laughs> and she says, indeed I would not. But he showed her it anyway. And I think she was, she was kind, of, kind of to see what a Petri dick was right enough, I think. <laughs> oh me. Shona, any favourite memories for Keith? Can you mind any? Um, Jaken, I had my 18th birthday at Keith Festival. It's I my birthday's I run about Keith Festival time and by luck my 18th was at Keith Festival. So it was a great weekend at 
But um, I mentioned I played with the Stuth Bogey Fiddlers. I also was lucky enough to join the Stuth Bay Fiddlers, which was, of course, uh, under the baton of Donald Barr. So uh, I mind the first time we were asked to guest at Keith. That was great excitement because you just thought you were actually with your wee Keith Festival badge and you could wander it. It was great. So, I mean, I've had so many good memories and so many pals in Keith as well. So, I mean, every Keith Festival, we, we just meet up and and hear tunes and songs. And, of course, the bowling club on a Saturday night after hours is usually pretty good. And I, I haven't got any, well, I, I have got memories, but I, I didn't think I could share a lot of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> of course, glad to be Glakeit guested as well, Shona. You, you've That's been right. a guest under many guises. Really right. And of course, uh, Keith is probably one of the first places that I saw Paul Anderson playing. Well, I was just about to say, your husband obviously plays fiddle and you met through music. Was it that mm -hmm. Keith or was it um, somewhere else that you first met? Uh, so... I, I was like a super fan of Paul's when I was about 13 or 14 and I actually got his autograph and all that kind of stuff. I got his CDs for my Christmas, played along in my bedroom. Um, I, I was a wee bit of a super fan and I can mind seeing him at Keith Festival and just, ah, oh, the young fiddlers going, oh, Paul Anderson, oh, he's so lovely and all this. And, uh, but no, it was the Keith Festival that we really met. It was, I'm afraid to say it was in Fife. <laughs> <laughs> Long Spoon Festival. So... Great. I know there's so many great memories of, of Keith uh, festivals. Um, I think singing five o'clock in the morning, the song in the Commons, I think it was you showing us singing that some way at five o'clock in the morning. Um, and that was now us getting up at five o'clock. It was just <laughs> towards the end of the night. Um, yes, Joe, we'll maybe come back to you since we've still got you. Uh, Come back to you for another song if you're up for it. Uh, well, I suppose <laughs> if if I stop, if I cut out halfway through, Gary, would you put your hand up so that I don't again, I don't sit here and <laughs> sing to myself. <laughs> it's all right, Pat's there with you. She'll enjoy it. There seems to be a fair bit of delay on tonight. Oh, well, I met to a gadgies down the road, quarrelling like to kill. Gain it was six or seven mile to yon to new tower the hill. Well, I hate my supper and my and I'm a tame is free something well what's the odds to me now it tramps the country up and down at money's an or a job I'm hired but I see no sense in racks and myself now they work when I'm tired For I just need a new to keep myself And my dose cost me no fee And be it sucks or seven miles to some tune Well, what's the odds to me? No, I pity no, I've never seen to the women folk. No, they've never seen to me. On the road, we far was, no, I could not fatty. And the bed, I even mark as a lonely bed. And some day, could be low, some tree. And be it socks or seven miles to some tune. And what's the odds to me? I pity folk, oh, gentle birth, 
Tied up with parasols and pedigrees, then they could throw their shackles off. Then, like me, they'd be truly free. For I was born in a dry stain dyke, in a dry stain dyke all and be it six or seven miles to some turn, well, what's the odds to me? Hey, we got all the way through it. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, oh, that's nice. Well, we've, unbelievably, we've been sitting here for an hour, blethering and hearing some songs. So we'll let you go and enjoy the sunshine, both of you. Thank you so much for getting up Thank your you. afternoon. And in fact, Joe, getting up hours to try and get, <laughs> <laughs> to try and get connected <laughs> between last oh, night and the day. Uh, but we got there. We've got the job. <laughs> <laughs> it has it was a job, but you've persevered, and we're glad you did. Uh, oh, I, I'll, I'll maybe hate to invest in some uh, some more modern equipment, <laughs> or um, or get some more technical knowledge into the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to your technician and all, she's done a grand job of day getting you up and running. Oh, she certainly has. <laughs> no problems. Hello, <laughs> Pat. <laughs> never, never far from his side. Except when he's letting the club. Uh, anyway. Well, we're going to nice finish to off. See you. Yes, thank Sorry. you, Joe. Thanks, Sean. We're going to finish off with some air archive footage, near of either of you two, but somebody that, uh, Joe, you mentioned in particular, uh, Dan Reed. Uh, this is for an open air concert. Um, must be around about two thousand ish, um, late nineties, early two thousands at least. Anyway, and uh, I think if I've got the right clip, it's Nicky Tams that he's singing at the open air concert in the square. So this will give you a flavour of, of the, the open air concert. Now it's back in the days when we used to hear the Porta Cabin up in the square alongside uh, uh, the, uh, the stage. So thank you both again so much for, for joining us and sharing some of your thoughts about the festival. Thanks to everybody that's been watching uh, and persevered with us for the last hour. Um, <laughs> the next thing that's on for the day uh, for the festival is the prize winners concert that starts at six o'clock. So you'll hear the adjudications for each of the classes and you'll see the winner perform uh, after that. Uh, and then we've got the concert at eight o'clock the night and it's compared by Natalie Chalmers. So we'll finish with uh, Tam Reed singing uh, Nicky Tams, once I can get the technology to, to work. But thanks again, Joe. Thanks again, Shona. And uh, hopefully it's not too long before we can see each other in person again. Cheers, Gary. Thanks, Gary. I was only ten year old, I left the Paris school. My father feed me to the mains to char his milk and meal. I first put on my narrow bricks to hop my spinal drums. Signed, buckled, thrown my knob and knees. A pair of Nicky Tams. The fair Mariam, we I know his wealthy buddies mean. The corns chip his horses thin, his harness fairly dean. He guards his lord where care so her fool, his conscience his neck warms. But when breeze traps brocks, there's nothing like a pair of Nicky Tams.
Am curten bone an in Urop Thompson sketchy dim. She is five and forty, of the Tom Jessentin. She clorts a muggle piece to me with different kinds of jam, and she tells me I'll connect that she admires my Nicky Tom. I start at today, Sunday, the day the Kirky for the young. My color at was on Katecht, my bricks nanny no long. I had my Bible and my pooch, likewise my book of Psalms. Then on air, or the muffled cake. The coffee Nicky Tom's. So, Uncle Sweet, I took them off the lassie for the please. But I'm a prick, the lark at up, harun about my knees. A muckle was crawled up my leg in the middle of a psalm. Oh, never again, I'll rig to the kirk. Without my Nicky Tams, I've often thought I'd like to be a bobby in the force, or maybe I'll get on the trams to drive a pair of horse. But if it is my luck to be the bobbies or the trams, I'll never forget the happy days of war man Nicky Tams.